Chapter 26 It was slow, so Alexis let me go early. I went home, showered, and changed before heading to Rains. He lived on the south end of town, and by the time I got there I was almost late. I knocked, and only had to wait for a moment before the door swung open, revealing my brother. He was close enough in height and age that I didn't think of him as my big brother, though he was almost a year older. I wondered what was going on. We saw each other every week at the family dinner, but it was uncommon for him to invite one sibling over without the others. How are you? He gave me a hug as I stepped inside. Good confused as hell but good. I turned to the living room. I've got enchiladas in the oven. They still have a little while, he said. Want anything to drink? I've got sodas, tea and water. A Pepsi would be great if you have one. If not tea. I have Pepsi, let me get that. Have a seat, I'll be right back, he invited. He returned and handed me the glass. What's up? I asked. I thought we should talk. You said that on the phone. About what? Life. Changes. Secrets. What's happening with you, all of it? I don't know what you're talking about. Yes you do, Nikki, he said. I guess I'll go first, since I've been keeping my secret longer. I stayed silent, waiting to hear what he had to tell me. I have what I think of as a blessing, he looked down at his hands, clasped together between his knees. I've known some who called it a curse, but it's been a blessing to me. I raised one eyebrow but didn't say anything. I've had it as long as I can remember. My grandmother, who had the same gift, taught me never to tell anyone, ever. When mom and dad adopted me, I kept it secret. You're the first person I've ever told. He looked at me, meeting my gaze. Why are you telling me now? Because it's time to share, Nikki. For both of us. I tried to calm the panic welling in my chest. I heard my heart thundering and couldn't make it slow. I hoped Rain couldn't hear it. I don't know what you mean, I pretended I didn't know what he was talking about. I think you do, but I'll continue anyway. I'm a seer, that's what Nan called us. I sometimes have visions. Bits of the future, events that could happen. Sometimes I can change them, sometimes not. Sometimes I don't even try or want to. Sometimes it's not events that I get, but insights into others, sometimes people I've just met, sometimes people I've known for years. I tried to keep a straight face, trying not to let him know I already knew about him. I know what you are, Nikki, he continued. I've known about your kind, though not about you for years. I couldn't keep my shock off my face, how could he know? I blinked, unsure what to say. I didn't ask you here to make accusations, condemn you, or to rail at you. I wanted to let you know I know. So you don't feel you have to keep it secret from me. Someone to talk to is something we all need sometimes. How do you know? I finally found the words to ask. I saw you shift. When? I've been so careful. I would have scented you. I was almost panicking at the thought I had somehow missed him. If I'd missed him, I could have missed someone else. I wasn't physically there. As for where, I would say you were on the mountain. You were next to an old pickup. A blush rose up my face. It occurred to me if he'd seen me shift, he'd also seen me naked, but I tried to ignore that tidbit. How long have you known? A few days. Not about me, about the kindred. I assume by kindred you mean the shifters, he asked. When I nodded, he continued, years. The first time I encountered one and picked up a sight of them in wolf form was when we were teenagers. You've never said anything? I figured I had secrets too. I wouldn't want them to share mine, so I kept quiet about theirs. I was amazed. I'd never imagined Rain would already know, but excitement that I no longer had to keep this secret from him raced through me. 
Mom and Dad know, I shared. But the Anakitos said I couldn't tell the rest of the family, the whole race is secret. I understand, he said. I just wanted you to know you don't have to keep it from me. I'm glad. A timer went off in the kitchen, and Rain went to take care of dinner. We visited while we ate, and then I went home. Saturday morning, as soon as I'd eaten and dressed, I called Bill. You busy? I asked. Not really. What's up? We should talk. It should probably be in person. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. It's not urgent, but it should be soon. All right. How about noon? Come by, we'll talk. Noon's great, I'll see you then. See you then. I disconnected, trying to figure out the best way to tell him what I knew he needed to know. I knocked on Bill's door at exactly noon. I'd asked for the meeting and I felt like it would be rude to be late after he'd made time. After a few seconds, Gabriel answered. I'd forgotten he would probably be there. Hey, Nikki. How are you? He said as he ushered me into the house. Pretty good, you. Staying busy. Bill said you'd be coming by and to tell you he's in his office. Not going to escort me down there and guard him from me? I teased, making him smile. No, I know you won't hurt him. Besides, he said no. I laughed. I'll see you later if you're still around, I said over my shoulder as I headed for the office. As much as I wasn't looking forward to it, I wanted to get this over with. I didn't see Bill when got to the door. I stepped inside anyway and looked around, still not finding him. I was about to go back to Gabriel when Bill appeared in the doorway. He carried a plate piled high with cut fruit in one hand and a pair of glasses in his other. Have a seat. I got us something to eat. He motioned toward the seating area. I sat on the edge of the black leather chair instead of all the way back. You said we needed to talk? Bill set the plate and glasses down and sat in the other chair. I did. I took a deep breath and let it out slowly. I wanted to be face to face when I told you Rain knows. You told your brother? Bill carefully showed no emotion, keeping me from judging his reaction. I didn't have to. He already knew. Who told him? He seemed short on patience. Let me tell you what happened, then you'll know as much as I do. I think that would be a good idea, he said, his voice terse. I explained to him what Rain had said and finished with, I already knew he was a seer, but I didn't know he knew about shifters. How did you know he's a seer? Bill seemed less angry now. One of my talents. It took me a while to figure it out. It was Hank who solved the mystery. Hank? I explained about my first meeting with Hank and the shock I'd felt. I continued with what Hank had told me at his place later. Bill seemed surprised. To clarify, you didn't tell Rain about the kitsune, and you believe him when he says no one told him? Yes, I answered briefly. In your opinion, will he continue to keep the secret? I think so. He's kept it this long and his own secret. He told me he didn't want his secret told, so why tell someone else's? I see. I tend to agree with you. But it may be an issue later, I need to have asked the right questions, understand? Yes, sir. Has it occurred to you your ability to sense power, maybe why you feel like you sense Devon's wolf? Bill asked. It has. I think the combination of sensing power and the calling animals is why I can feel it. I didn't realize what it was until after I shifted someone the first time. It's an interesting theory. Sensing powers is uncommon. It's possible that's why no one knows anything about calling a non-shifter's animal. I didn't know what to say. Bill seemed to be talking more to himself than to me anyway. 
I listened to him for a few minutes before he remembered I was there. We ate the fruit he'd brought and visited for a bit before I left, promising to call when Devon made a decision. I didn't see Gabriel on my way out. He must have been busy.